Hello there. Hope you are feeling good today. So a little bit of work on shoulders and mainly for tension release. There will be a little bit of strengthening as well, which is always a good thing around the shoulders. Um, often we get aches and pains in the shoulders when the shoulders are, the spaces between the space between the shoulder blades um, across the shoulder girdle are a little bit weaker, partly because of posture, because we round. So this will help to wake up the shoulders, feel a little bit more space and hopefully feeling good. If you have any shoulder injuries, be really, really cautious, of course, around what you're doing um, in these postures. And you can make it lighter. You don't have to make it intense or strong if you feel that it's it's too soon for you. Um, it's always a, the, these kind of movements are really um, the kind of things you can do um, progressively, especially the first time, or especially if you're new to yoga, um, just be gentle with yourself and then see how you feel the next day or even the day after that before you decide whether or not you did uh, too much or whether you could do a little bit more. I'm just sort of talking to see if anybody else wants to join and uh, join in. I did have a, a test video up there just to get the spacing and I was talking to myself, realized it was actually gone live. So hope you enjoyed that too. Um, I had find myself doing that quite a lot recently. So um, it was a little bit embarrassing. Never mind, no bother. Um, so um, don't need any equipment as such apart from, of course, your mat and maybe a blanket. The blanket is mainly for your knees or for kneeling positions. Um, there'll be a little bit of balance in, in the session as well today but certainly um, you can progress into these postures in a, a in your own way so let's start off with a seat in fact I'm going to sit on the blanket um, I know I'm going to kneel on the blanket so you can sit actually however you prefer so if you find this posture isn't um, isn't good for your knees don't force yourself to do it doesn't really matter how you're sitting as long as you're comfortable enough for the next few minutes of preparation. So let's close the eyes, relax your hands down onto your legs, wherever your legs are, wherever your knees are. You can turn the palms up, turn the palms down, but try and soften around the shoulders. So there's a sense of dropping down in the shoulders and the arms, the arms are heavy, but lengthening up through the crown of the head. So you can position that the head so you feel balanced, the weight of the skull down through the neck. And then tuning into your breath. Feel the breath in and out through the nose. Notice that if you hold tension at your neck and shoulders. And what that feels like, where that is. Okay, let's begin to gently open the eyes. We're going to stay sitting. Interlace the fingers and then turn the palms outwards. So rotate your wrists and um, below your elbows. And first of all, push forward and see if you can get the arms to extend and they might not go straight. That's okay if they don't go straight. And then begin to rise up with the, the hands. So Going slowly, and rather than going right overhead at this point, stay forward, so that, say, with the hands slightly forward or out in front. Widen across the shoulder blades, so with the hands forward and the arms still as extended as you can make them, pull the shoulders down and widen. And then you can keep your hands as you are, but what I want to just demonstrate here is you want to make sure through this movement and the next um, few movements while we're sitting here that your lower front ribs stay down. Okay, so quite often if we're tight in the shoulders, the body wants to cheat that because we're tight and it wants to usually bend the spine. And what tends to happen is the lower front ribs flare out forward. So basically we can arch the back 
to try and make it feel like we've got the hands and arms higher. So lower front ribs stay down as you begin to bring your baby fingers back. So you're bringing the hands almost over your head, maybe all the way, maybe not, if you find that as you're doing this, your lower front ribs start to arch out. Okay, so we're looking for an extended lower back area rather than an arched one. And keeping the arms as straight as you can. You've got the fingers interlaced still, of course, so feel that you can pull the fingers away from each other, but without actually releasing the hands. Two more breaths. It's a certain concentrated effort to be able to do this position with your arms and not flare out the ribs, so it takes practice. And then releasing the hands and let the elbows go wide out to the side. Whew, release his shoulders, let them drop down a little bit lower. As a mirror image, you're gonna bring your um, arms to cross your right over left. See if you can hook your right elbow on the inside of the left inner elbow. And I don't know if you can see the hands there. I've actually got my palms together. Not always possible for everybody. So you can have your, the backs of your hands together or the palms together. Whichever position you've got your hands, doesn't matter. Lift the elbows, at least shoulder height. And breathe into the space between the shoulders. So this is eagle arms, Garandasana arms. So really sort of spacious opening sensation around the upper back. Press the forearms into each other. Press the forearms in. And then release. Let's go wide again. And then this time, of course, opposite arm, left over right, or whichever size you didn't do. And again, try and hook the elbows. It's quite hard to hook the elbows over, so do your best to get that if you can. And lift the elbows up, so at least shoulder height, so you're aiming to bring the elbows up. Breathe into the space between the shoulder blades. and press the forearms into each other. So you're creating this muscular action, activation, but nothing actually moves. So it looks like we're doing nothing, but we're creating warmth, hopefully around your shoulders, around your upper arms and your neck. Press the forearms together. And then release, okay. This time we're gonna bring the hands behind the back of the body. So in your same sitting position, you can stay the same. And a couple of ways to do this. You can hold your elbow, if you can reach, if you can reach your elbows, go for this option. Again, it's quite tough. If you're tight in the shoulders, you probably can't reach your elbows. And so instead you could hold or clasp your forearms closer towards your wrist if you're very, very tight, okay? It's a little bit of a stretch for you to bring the hands onto the arms, whichever position you've chosen. Ensure your lower front ribs stay dropped down as you squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other. And then pressing the hands into the arms, try to widen the space between the shoulder blades again. So you're squeezing the shoulder heads back but you're creating width across the upper back rather than crunching in the upper, upper back area. Two more breaths. And then releasing, interlace the fingers again, this time behind the back. You can get the palms to touch if you're, if you're more flexible, you don't have to if you're not able to. Roll the shoulder heads back, keep them down low from the ears, and again, play around with extending the arms. If they go to straight, great. If they don't, don't worry. And then as you're getting the arms extended, reaching or lifting your hands from your hips. Again, check the lower front ribs. Haven't lifted. This is the last one of these arm stretches in the sitting, sitting position.
and then releasing. Hopefully feel warmer in the arms and shoulders already. Okay, we're gonna come on to the hands and knees and bring yourself towards the back of your mat so your feet are towards the back edge. And again, you could just use the blanket here for a bit of padding under your knees, whatever feels good. Tabletop position with your hands shoulder width apart. And you want to ensure that your hands are shoulder width, at least shoulder width. Now, I wouldn't go super, super wide um, unless you're very, very broad in the upper back and shoulders or you're very, very tight. Um, so smaller, short, smaller than shoulder width would make it more challenging, um, but it's not necessarily the aim. We're not trying to make it more challenging. We just want to find a nice opening and releasing position for the arms and shoulders. So first finger points forward. So spreading your fingers out. If you can see on that very well, spreading your fingers out wide, but the first finger points forward. And what you're trying to do with your hands shoulder width apart, you're trying to create a straight line from the first finger all the way up the forearm, all the way up to the center of the shoulder head, approximately. It's approximate, but what we're looking to do is reduce twist in the wrist and create as much space in the shoulders. The other thing I'd like you to look at here is look at the inner elbow, eye of the elbow sometimes it's called. Turn the inner elbow forward without lifting the hands or knuckles of the fingers. So you see how you can gently sort of rotate the forearm so that the inner elbow points forward and this helps to create this widening effect across the upper back and shoulders. So see if you can maintain the inner elbow pointing forward, or when we translate this to downward dog, it'll be almost upwards. It's almost the same thing really. Okay, so tabletop position, arms extended, broad across the upper back. Took the toes, feet and knees hip width apart, hover the knees and then pressing the chest back to a gentle downward dog. Gentle in the legs, we're not really doing anything with the legs, so um, don't force the legs to do anything that your body's not ready to do. And see if you can maintain, first finger forward, of course, um, arms extended, inner elbow towards the sky, wide and broad and across the upper back, but pressing the chest back towards the thighs at the same time. I've got my legs bent here. Let's move into... Um, so let's shift from here into a position which just helps to look at your shoulders a little bit more. So actually we're going to keep the knees lifted and not quite come into plank, but bring the chest further forward than where you might be in downward dog. Make it easier on your shoulders. Bend the elbows. Turn the inner elbows forward and then push the chest back as you extend the arms out again. So... Notice how your elbows want to flare outwards as the chest goes back. Inner elbows towards the sky or forward. Broad across the upper back. You can make this lighter if this is pretty intense. Let's do that again. So shift the weight forward slightly. Bend the elbows. Now turn the inner elbows forward and re-extend the arms. So nice and gradually re-extend the arms. Trying to stay broad across the upper back. And then releasing the knees down to the floor. Ooh, hopefully nice and warm across the shoulders already. Let's step the right foot forward. Doesn't have to be a super long way, but as comfortable as you can around your hips for the right foot flat to the floor, the back knee out behind. And so you can rise up without feeling too wobbly here. Interlace the fingers behind. Notice which thumb is on top as you interlace your fingers. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, lift the chest, maybe lift the hands. Extending out through the arms. And then feel that you can pull the hands apart, but don't let go, right? So pulling 
but not releasing the hands. Two more breaths. And then releasing the hands to the floor. So pressing the hands all the way down to the mat. Step the left, uh, right knee back, apologies. Hands, shoulder width, first finger forward, bend the elbows, wrap the inner elbows towards the sky or forward. Tuck the toes, lift the knees, and then pressing the chest back as you re-extend your arms. You might notice a few creaks and cracks going on in your shoulders. That's okay. As long as you're not getting pain. And if you are, then please stop. We would expect this kind of movement, these deep stretches and, and rotations to have an effect. That might mean a muscular shift or change. Let's lower the knees down to the mat. Let's step the left foot forward for the second side low lunge position. Be steady through the foot, the back knee, so you can rise up with relative ease. Now, opposite thumb on top. So if you're not sure which way you were, or you didn't, um, didn't check that, just crossing the way that feels a bit strange is where they, the second side. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, lift the chest and lifting the hands. And then again, you're gonna pull on the hands as if you could pull the hands apart, but without releasing. Widen across the upper back as you're doing that action. Now you won't be in a super wide position across the upper back, but it's this opening effect. The front side of your chest and the front side of your shoulder heads, stretching both the tissue, uh, the muscles, but also the skin. And you might feel that quite profoundly across the skin. And then releasing. Now we're gonna release the hands down, but this time step forward with your right foot, hip width to the left foot. So you're stepping up, little bend in the knees for comfort around the legs and lower back. And then let's hang down in this ragdoll position and completely soften your shoulders here, your arms. Don't worry if your hands are not touching the floor, release the neck. You might even move the head side to side or nod the head a few times. Let the head feel heavy, let the neck muscles release. We're gonna rise up halfway. So lift the chest, bring the hands to the legs or the floor. Shoulders back, extend the spine, breathe in and breathe out, fold. So folding all the way back down, you could even hold the back of the legs and gently tuck the chin in. Let's go again, inhale halfway up. Chest lifts, shoulders down. Exhale, fold in and down. One more time, halfway, inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up to stand this time. You can bring the arms up, forward or wide, depending on your space. And bringing the hands together, draw the shoulders from the ears. Inhale, rise with the arms. Exhale and fold. Reaching down, whether the hands are on the legs or the floor, inhale halfway again, lift the chest. Exhale, we're gonna step the left knee down behind and find that balanced position again through the right foot flat to the floor, lifting the chest, this time reaching up with the arm. So let's keep the hands shoulder width apart and project the fingers up. Now, your lower back is slightly arched because of this lunge position, but try to keep your lower front ribs in, okay? Easier said than done, but it's the, the practice of, as you bring your thumbs back, notice the challenge in the shoulders. And 
and then slowly releasing to bring the hands to the floor. We're gonna step the right knee back, switching to bring the left foot forward into that lunge, low lunge position, rising up when you're ready. Again, reaching up with the arms, hands shoulder width, arms extended, and again, notice how it feels as your thumbs move backwards, lower front ribs in as much as you can. So part of most of this actually is awareness. Um, it's physically challenging, but awareness is the main thing that's going on if you're new to these postures. Notice how you're moving your arms or your shoulders relative to your upper body. And it's sometimes just with that slight shift of awareness, you can get a lot more range of motion without, without too much effort actually. And we're gonna lower the hands all the way down. We're gonna step the left knee back. I'm gonna move the blanket. You can move it um, if you want as well. We're gonna lay down on the front of the body. So lay down onto the front, untuck the toes so the feet are comfortable. Chin or forehead on the mat. And now interlace the fingers behind. So knuckles facing outwards, squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other. Extend the arms. Lift the chin and chest so your upper body lifts off the floor. Maybe lift the hands from the hips, maybe not, but try to extend your arms. Press the pelvis down into the mat. And then releasing to come all the way down. Take a moment's rest. You could turn the head or place the forehead down. Let the shoulders release and drop towards the floor. And we're going to press up to the hands and knees. You could use a blanket here if you want to. Hands shoulder width, take your time to prepare, tuck the toes, breathe in. Inner elbows turn forward, extend the arms as you press the chest back. And just check you're towards the back end of your mat with the feet. Often we're the other way around, the hands are at the top, but the feet towards the back end of the mat today. I'm going to step the right foot forward. So bring the foot between the hands. Spin the back heel down. Turn the back toes to face the long edge of the mat, but keep your right toes facing forward towards the narrow edge. Bend your right knee as you rise up to warrior two. You can be more or less gentle on the legs depending on how you experience this in the legs today. And then reach the arms wide. Shoulders down. Bend the elbows. And then we're gonna cross the left over right. I'm gonna do the same as you this time, left over right. As we did sitting, eagle arms. Lift the elbows high. And then the forearms and the hands sort of tilt them over to the left side depending on how it feels, you can move more or less, but sort of tilting across to the left. Pull the shoulders down, but keep the elbows level with the shoulders. And then tilt the head so the right ear is towards the right shoulder. One more breath here. And then exhale, release the arms. Bringing the hands all the way down. Let's step back to downward dog. Pressing the chest back. And when you're in your downward dog, check that the lower front ribs are not flaring out forward or down. Instead, your lower ribs pulling in towards the spine. 
So lengthening the spine rather than arching the back, especially if you're quite flexible in your spine or your hips. Sometimes we compensate in the hips and pelvis area for tightness in the shoulders. Look forward, left foot between the hands. Spin the back heel, warrior two, second side. Find a steady balanced position with the legs. Shoulders from the ears. You can stay as you are, I'm gonna turn around. Second side. And then we're gonna cross. Uh, I think it's right over left, isn't it, right? So bend the elbows right over left. Lift the elbows high. Tilt the arms to the right side. And then left ear towards the left shoulder. Keep the elbows at the height of the shoulders, even though the shoulders are down from the ears, effectively. Release the arms, and you're going to stay over that left leg as you spin the hands all the way down to downward dog. Bring the shoulders directly over your wrist this time. Inhale at the top. Exhale as you guide yourself down. As you do so, bring your, keep your elbows into your ribs so that you don't crunch the shoulders forward. Lower down to the mat, untuck the toes. Release the hands so that the arms are by the side body. Palms down, pressing the palms into the floor initially, but extend your arms. And as you extend your arms, crawl your fingertips further down towards your feet so your shoulders pull away from your ears. So chin or forehead down. And now we'll begin to lift the hands without bending the elbows. Palms still facing down. Squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other. So this is a little bit of strengthening around the upper back. Lift the head or chin and lift some the chest somewhat. Try not to lift the chin upwards, but the back of the neck reaching upwards. So you're keeping the neck in line with the rest of your spine. Hover the hands or arms, depending on how high you are here. Keep the arms straight, squeeze the shoulder blades together. And then lowering all the way down. When you get there, rest, turn the head the other way or forehead down. Relax your shoulders as comfortable as you can around your arms. And then releasing to bring the hands back under your shoulders, tuck the toes, tabletop position. Eventually travel all the way in to downward dog. Preparing, setting up awareness of shoulders as you're moving around. Awareness of your spine and the ribs, the chest pressing back. But this, the space or the movement is around your shoulders rather than your uh, lower ribs, spine area. Okay, we're gonna step the right foot forward. As before, spin the back heel. Rise all the way up, find your balance. You can keep the right knee bent uh, for a little while here. We're just gonna prepare into towards triangle posture. Actually, again, just check that your back foot is towards the back end of your mat so that you have space forward, especially if you're in a smaller room than what you would be in a studio space. You wanna make sure you've got enough space out in front, okay? You're gonna take the left arm, spin it round. Actually, um, I'll say that again, you're gonna turn the thumb down and then take your left arm, reach behind the back of the body as if you could hold your right thigh. Pull your left shoulder down from the ear. Roll your left shoulder back. Okay, we're gonna straighten or extend the right leg. 
The leg is firm, the right leg is engaged. Don't have to force the knee back if it's uncomfortable in the knee, back of the knee. Keep it a little bit bent. Reach the right arm forward and then come into triangle, what is otherwise a triangle position. So this right hand doesn't have to be low unless you're more flexible in the legs, but your right hand can rest on the leg, turning the chest, spinning back with the left shoulder, turn the head and gaze down towards the right toes, towards the floor. And we're gonna gradually progress to half moon pose. If you're not so familiar with the posture, you might want to look first. You're gonna bend the right knee, knee a little bit, reach the right hands forward, you can drag the left foot in or step it in slightly. Fingertips or hand flat to the floor and lift the left leg. Now this is a side opening posture. It's basically triangle with the legs as you were in the last posture. Back toes are horizontal along uh, the horizon. So the back toes are along, um, so, sorry, the back toes are perpendicular to the front toes. Stacking your left hip over your right hip rolling that left shoulder back. Again, turn the gaze down towards the right hand. And then we're gonna set that left foot back all the way down. Okay, let's release to bring the hands either side of the foot, step back to downward dog. Look forward, step the left foot between the hands. Spin the back heel. Rise up what is warrior two effectively to start with. And then you're gonna take, turn your left thumb down and reach around. Oh no, do turn your right thumb down. That felt strange. Uh, right hand towards your left thigh. And if you can't get the thigh, doesn't matter, go to wherever you can reach, right? So your right shoulder rolls back, it stays down. And then extend the left leg. Reach the left arm forward and across to a side position. So the position of your right hand and arm helps you to roll the top right shoulder back. Turn the gaze down to the left toes. And then we'll prepare for half moon pose on the second side. So make sure you have some space out in front. So you've got space for your hand. And then you can reach forward, basically in line with that left foot, maybe slightly to the left if it helps you balance more. Fingertips or hand pressing down, whatever's easiest to reach. Stack your right hip over left so your back toes are horizontal, back foot's horizontal, roll your right shoulder back. Almost feel like you're leaning back. And then releasing, step the back foot right behind and the hands down and step back to a high plank or a half plank with the knees on the floor. Keep the elbows in, inhale, exhale as you lower down. Half oval plank to the floor. And then scoot yourself back so that your toes are right on the very end of your mat, if not maybe slightly over if you're very tall. You want to have enough space out in front to reach your hands forward and the arms may be straight. So you might need to scoot back for your space. Let's spin the hands, palms down again by the side body, chin and forehead down to start. I like chin just because I'm talking. Um, in terms of posture, I think forehead's actually probably better because it's long in the neck. Have the toes on tucked, press the toenails into the mat or floor. And then inhale, as you lift the head, don't, chin, don't jut the chin forward. 
lift the chest, lift the hands, squeeze the shoulder blades together. So there's a strengthening around the upper back. Press the pelvis down. And then we're gonna progressively move to make it a bit more challenging in the shoulders. So depending on your space, you might want to bend your elbows, but keep the hands and the elbow shoulder height as much as you can. That might be pretty tough here, right? So keep the hands and elbows shoulder height throughout this movement, if not higher, okay? So you can stay elbows bent or you can go to a Y position, the hands really wide. Notice the arms want to drop because we're getting tired. And then if you want to try a little bit further, you can have the hands shoulder width, probably thumbs towards the sky. Again, project the wrists up higher than your shoulders. One more breath here. And then releasing all the way down. Rest the head, the arms and shoulders. Steady the breath. And now releasing the hands to the floor, pressing to the hands and knees. You could stay on your hands and knees, or you might want to take downward dog. This will be the last downward dog of this session, actually. I'll just see how the shoulders feel compared to where we started. Partly because we're warmer, of course, but maybe we're just finding a little bit more alignment in the elbows towards the sky, wide across the shoulders, loose around the neck. And we're going to step the right foot forward between the hands. Now we're going to walk the hands towards the center of your mat and then spin the feet so the feet are parallel, aligned with each other. This can be quite intense on the legs, so um, you might want to bend your knees heavily, but you want to keep the weight into your heels. Even if you bend your knees, you want to keep the weight moving backwards. Reach the hands forward as if you're like doing downward dog with the hands and arms. Obviously, quite a different experience around the legs here, but pressing the chest back for two breaths. Now you're going to keep your right hand in place. You're going to walk uh, or bring that left hand down the right leg and towards the foot. Might not be right to the ankle or foot, but down the leg as far as you can. You want a good grasp. So if you can't reach low, come up a bit higher and you might find you can hold on a little bit better. You're staying level between in the two sides of the legs. Um, the, the, they're both doing the same thing. You're not swinging over one way, both bent or both straight equally. And then you're gonna pull gently on that left arm and turn towards and underneath that right armpit. Now you don't have to turn a long way. What I want you to feel is a stretch on the left shoulder blade area. So the stretch is on the left side, around the shoulder blade, just underneath. It's a fancy posture to get into that space, but it works really well if you can get there. Breathe and notice the stretch as you breathe. It's worth it, I promise. One more breath. And then release, as you release, you might need to give the legs a little rest. You might wanna rise up slightly. Thighs may be getting a bit warmer too now because of the bent leg position. We are gonna do the second side, of course, and we're gonna stay um, in this position to move over to the second side. So reach the hands forward, hips move back, knees bent or not. Keep the weight in the heels. You're gonna keep your left hand and arm in place. You're gonna reach the right hand across. Just get yourself set up so you can pull effectively with the right hand and then even out the legs again. And it is a turning action under the left armpit, but really now working in sensation on the right shoulder blade area, back of the shoulder, underneath the shoulder blade, pulling gently with the right hand on the leg and stay with the breath here. Feels so good. Mm -hmm. 
And then releasing, we're going to walk the hands back over the front right leg. Take your time. Coming into a tabletop position. Let's bring maybe a blanket under the knees. Tabletop position, reach the hands forward, first finger forward. We're reaching way past the level of the wrist this time. Press to extend your arms, wrap the inner elbows towards the sky. Extend the arms as you press the chest down towards the floor and towards your thighs. So this is quite a tough posture. It's hard to keep the arms straight. It's hard to keep the inner elbow upwards. That's okay, so do what you can. Work with the sensation. Lower front ribs pull in towards your spine. Pressing the hands firmly into the mat. Okay, one more stretch coming up. That's one. We're gonna lay down on our front. which is a relief. <laughs> Bend the elbows, first of all, at shoulder height. So the elbows, palms down, and we're gonna keep the elbows bent for this position. This is a posture where we roll onto the side body and stretch the shoulder that's underneath. We normally, I normally do this with the arms straight. So if you've never done it with the arms bent, don't expect to move into the shape in the same way as you would with the arms straight. So it's a lot more in sensation, a lot more intense. You're gonna have the elbows bent. We're gonna work on the left side first. So that's the side that's closest to the screen for you. Um, so it's easier to see. Left elbow slightly forward or higher now of your shoulder. So the elbow is about 90 degrees, but it's going further up out in front. Okay, and then you're gonna use your right hand, the other hand on the floor, pressing onto the floor to rotate and turn onto the left, oh, not all the way over onto the left side, but turning to the in the direction of the left side body. Okay, this is pretty intense and we're gonna, not gonna stay here for too long. What I want you to do now is press your left elbow, left forearm gently down into the floor and pull the left shoulder from the ear. Press down with the left forearm and hold that sensation for two more breaths. And then release. Okay, second side, elbows wide. About 90 degrees on the elbows, but bring your right elbow forward or higher up towards the head. Use our left hand to press into the floor as you rotate onto the right side, more or less onto the right side. Press down through your right elbow forearm, press into the floor. So hold the stretch, press down. And then releasing gently back onto the front body as you do so. Release your arms. We'll kind of rest before we take your vasana on the back body. Turn the head or forehead down, relax the arms, shoulders. And then you might be happy to roll over in place. In fact, you might just want to turn over onto the back. Bring the feet to the floor. When you lay down on your back, be aware of your shoulders, shoulder blades towards each other slightly so that you can Rest your upper body weight into the shoulder blades, then turn the palms to the sky, slightly out from the body, palms towards the sky. Relax then across the upper back and the arms. And you can keep the feet flat to the floor, which is useful actually to um, let the lower ribs drop down. So you might want that to happen first. So let the lower ribs settle, gently settling, settling, as you're staying here. Or if and when you're ready, you could of course straighten your legs out, whatever you prefer but lower front ribs settling down. In fact, the lower back ribs settling down as well. Relaxing across the pelvis, across the thighs, and then down the legs. 
Relax the abdomen, releasing any sensation of effort in the breath. The arms feel heavy, let the chest broaden, let the ribs widen. Let the arms drop, the shoulders drop, everything's just settling down. If you haven't already, close your eyes, relax the face. Allow the lips to close without tension at the jaw, so there might be space between the teeth, the upper teeth, the lower teeth, and definitely no clenching around the back teeth. Let the tongue rest and the breath move to your nose. The face muscles relax across the forehead, around the eyes. Allow yourself to drop heavier onto the mat. The whole body resting. The whole body peaceful. Ease, especially around the shoulders and the neck. It's just the emotional release of a consequence of the physical release. You can begin to take a few chips off the shoulder or release the weight of some of the weight of the world off our shoulders from the physical form. So we'll begin to gently wake up. We'll move the fingers and the toes. And to move the wrist, the ankles, and the arms and the legs. When you're ready, you could bend the knees in to your chest. Hug the legs in, support the legs, and gently rock side to side a few times. And then whichever side's best, roll over to one side. Rest on the side body, support the head. And gently bring yourself all the way up. Into any sitting position, sit tall, keep the shoulders down there as you lift the chest and long, elongate the neck. Thank you for your practice. Namaste.